it's green, man. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. In a previous episode, we took you to the Japanese car auction so we could pick up a new ride. And this episode, we reveal what car we bought and what we had to do to get it on the road in Australia. But first, we need to take a little trip back in time. This is me in the mid 90s. I'm rolling in a VL Commodore, busting out with my mates on an XR 250 and making my cash by dressing up as a huge mobile phone at the local shopping centre. I eventually saved up enough cash to buy my first import, an S13 Nissan Silvia, but I uh, had a few problems with that one. So I used the insurance money and imported my first car from Japan, a 1994 Nissan 180SX. This is the day it arrived in Australia, and under all that dirt and filth is the famous SR20 engine, the same one that my sunburnt Sylvia had. We got modding of course, and added a front mount intercooler, coilovers, pod filter, blow off valve and a boost controller with a bar of boost along with a full 3 inch exhaust before completing a Type X conversion with a Vertex kit. Yeah, it was an awesome car. So fantastic that for some reason I sold it and bought this. But we don't talk about that anymore. After spending my first homeowner's grand on petrol, I sold the Jeep for something more economical and Mighty Mods was born with the Daihatsu from our very first episode. Many more cars have since been purchased, but pertinent to our story is the all-wheel drive Nissan GTIR, which we used for episodes 4 to 10. This little rocket also came equipped with the SR20, the same engine found in the Sylvia and the 180SX. So without further ado, in memory of my very burnt S13 Sylvia, I'd like to introduce a little friend of mine. So there it is, it's a Nissan S15, they make awesome street cars, track cars, drift cars of course, and anybody that's into performance cars would be very familiar with what these things are capable of. Did you know Martin, that in Japan they call them a strawberry? Why? <laughs> you look really interested dude. Because they're an S15, one five, one in Japanese is itchy, five is go, itchy go is Japanese for strawberry. Anyway, so we're going to take you back to Japan and show you how we got it here. They call them a strawberry dude. This is the cleanest original S15 we've ever seen. Thank you, Nabuel. We won the car. This is our car. We own it. 
We're shipping this back to Australia, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. And Once the car's purchased, the agent needs to deregister the car in Japan and transport it to the ship. There'll be an FOB charge, which includes everything all the way from the car rolling onto the ship in Japan. When the car arrives in Australia, it needs to go through customs and pass quarantine. All cars less than 30 years old brought into Australia need to be complied by a certified workshop. Depending on the car, they may require new seat belts, child restraints, tyres, a catalytic converter and side intrusion bars, amongst other things. The cost varies depending on the car and how much work needs to be done. After a full service, you'll need to get a blue slip to prove that it's roadworthy and then a compliance plate. With a green slip in hand, you can get the car registered, but you can't insure an S15 unless it has an approved alarm and immobiliser. So Andrew from Rhino installed a RAV3 which has an inbuilt turbo timer. If the alarm goes off while it's cooling down, it'll cut the turbo timer off, the mobilizers will be kicked on, the siren will go off its brakes. These engines respond really well with better flow, so our first upgrade is the full turbo back performance exhaust, which we're going to install with a bit of help. A 3 inch system will give you about an extra 25 kilowatts on this car and coupled with a tune we should see gains of over 40 kilowatts. First up, off with the old system. We're installing an X4 system with a Verax muffler which comes with a motor that activates a valve so you can adjust the performance and volume of your exhaust from as quiet as stock through to a track ready straight through system, all controlled with a small remote control. The modules can also be set up to open at specific RPMs by reading the ignition signal. Okay, so the old system's removed. What's the lowdown, Marty? So the difference between the factory exhaust and the aftermarket exhaust we're putting on comes down to flow. More flow means more power. It starts right here in the dump pipe. You can see the difference in size there. The original exhaust is two and a quarter inch. This one's three. We go through to our high flow cat. And then as we move to the center muffler, you can see where the exhaust pipe size steps down, creating restrictions. You go through to the rear muffler, you can see the welds where the chambers are. Well, the exhaust gas has to flow through those. It's a reverse flow muffler, meaning that it has to change direction. With this Verax, you can choose, and if you want, you can have it straight through. It means less restriction, more power. So what's the deal with gaskets? It's always better to use genuine gaskets on uh, parts that are going to bolt up to the face of the turbo or the head. Um, on the rest of the system, it's okay to use the supplied aftermarket gasket, but never ever use them on turbos. It's always best to use genuine gaskets. Why is that? Uh, because the gasket that's supplied uh, are normally cheap. Um, they're a composite gasket made of two skins of she uh, thin sheet with a graphite substance in between, uh, which can easily blow out under the extreme pressure of turbos, whereas the genuine gasket is just a far better quality gasket. Make sure you use an appropriate sealer on the gaskets and don't use super glue. With the exhaust all fitted up, we're going to do a quick decibel test to make sure we're legal. And it's all good.
this an S15 Silvia? There's parts everywhere, they're easy to modify and great fun to drive. Now, there is one thing, Marty, that we've neglected to tell everyone. What's that? Well, dude, you bought a car too.